Hi, my name is Phil Gardner and welcome to Fun With Boxes. In Wales, we love dragons, so much so we've got one on our flag. We do love a board game when a dragon turns up in it, especially coot dragons. And in this case, even more so because of coot dragons in need of a haircut. I mean, look at it, how adorable. Yes, today we are looking at Dragon Keepers, designed by Michael Menzel and published by the wonderful Cosmos Games. You may well have come across one of Michael's other games, the great Legends of Andor games, and more recently his rather creative and epic game, The Adventures of Robin Hood. What you may not realise is that Michael not only designs his games, but also does the artwork, something I did not pick up on before, and I really should have, as Michael is a brilliant and prolific artist and you may well find that you already own a fair number of games featuring his fantastic art. So my respect for Michael has just risen to the heights only dragons can climb to or flap to I guess. Michael you may well live in Germany but because of this wonderful dragon you are now an honorary Welsh person. Yay! Yay! If you see the Cosmos Games logo on the side of a box, in my opinion, you know you are in safe hands. And I really do not need any further prompting to reach for my wallet and snaffle it up. I know I'm going to be in for a treat. There are, at the time I filmed this video, 1,169 games listed on Board Game Geek for Cosmos. That's mind-blowing. So they really do know a thing or two about board games, you know. And they have a load of big hit games too, such as The Crew, Cascadia, Targi, The Red Cathedral, and of course the wonderful Exit Escape Room games. Talking of which, if you have not tried one, you simply have to pick up an Exit Advent Calendar. We get one every year and boy are they fantastic. An escape room puzzle every day on the run up to Christmas. Wow, it just does not get much better than that. Plus, I've been lucky enough to meet some very special people working for Cosmos over the last few years. Very special indeed. You know who you are. But I'm here to take a look at Dragon Keepers. And it's frankly difficult to get past the game box to take a look inside because of these fantastic looking dragons. I mean, look at this little one on the back cover. Oh my goodness, so cute. Okay, okay, so dragon keepers. Even dragons start small, and before they can learn to fly or even cook a piece of toast, they need to be well protected and looked after. And as experienced dragon keepers, this is where you come in. In order to look after your dragons, you need to use the magic book with its two open pages to show you which dragons and how many you can take under your protection. And you may well need to enchant the magic book to manipulate things in your favour and win the fantastic dragon keeping contest. So let's take a fun with boxes look at what you get inside this wonderful looking game. Next, I will talk you through the setup and how the game plays, and then a quick review. There are chapter stops in the comments below that you can use. Unfortunately, I do not have enough subscribers for the chapters to work on screen, but you can use them in the comments to jump to a section of the video if you wish. In the meantime, please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this video. The more subscribers will mean eventually I get the chapter stops working in the future. So that's a good thing. In Dragon Keepers, you will compete against other magicians, looking after the young dragons using a shared magic book formed of two stacks of cards that show the two pages of the magic book that you can use that turn. The page on the left shows how many dragons you need to look after and your reward for doing so. And the right hand page shows what type of dragons you need to look after. Red, blue, green or white dragons. Near the magic book are the young dragons that you will collect. But as you collect them, the pages of the magic book change, which in turn changes the number and colour of the dragons you can look after that turn. 
as well as the rewards you get for doing so. But you can cast spells to change the pages of the magic book in your favour to get the best rewards. But each spell requires one or two of your dragons to cast them. Which dragons can you keep to look after and which do you use to turn the pages? And all the while you will be collecting your rewards, piecing together amulets, collecting pearls, collecting crests and golden eggs. At the end of the day, will you have the most to be declared the best dragon keeper in the land? Only time will tell. Setup. The first thing you need to do is to find 11 shadow dragon cards. These have the number 6 on the back of the cards and place them in a stack on the table. Next, find the 8 starting cards. These have a red ribbon on them and again place them in a stack on the table. The remaining cards will form two stacks that you place in the middle of the table to form the two pages of the magic book. All these cards have dragons on one side and pages of the magic book on the other. Collect all the cards that have a number on them. They also have icons showing the rewards underneath the number. Shuffle them and place them in a stack number side up. Then shuffle up the remaining cards which will have a coloured dragon on them and place them to the right of the number stack to form the right hand page of the magic book. You will then have the magic book set up showing the number of dragons required on the left and the colour of the dragons required on the right. Next, reveal the top card from each stack and place it dragon side up underneath their respective pages to form the display. Take all the amulet parts and place them face down on a table and shuffle them up. Then, remove a certain amount dependent on player count. For example, in a two-player game, you remove 16. Turn the remaining pieces of the amulets face up and organise them into piles according to their values in ascending order. Place the three crest tokens onto the table, but if playing a two-player game, you only use the ten and six-point crest tokens. Place the nine golden eggs showing the number four face up and the fifteen pearls all face down and shuffled so that the numbers are hidden. And finally, put the ten crystals in a pile on the table. Once you've played the game a few times, there are six magic chests that you can use in a game. But keep these in the box until you are ready to give them a go to spice up the game. But it's highly recommended to play the basic game a few times before digging into these. The final thing you do is pick a starting player. And the game does not suggest a method to do this, so pick someone at random. Or you could all make a raw dragon noise. And the person making the cutest dragon raw goes first. That would be my preferred method. Once you have your starting player, the other players in clockwise order will pick starting cards. The player in second place will pick one starting card. The player in third place will pick two starting cards. And the last player will pick three starting cards. The actual starting player receives no starting cards, but does get to go first. And now you are ready to play. Gameplay. On your turn, you will take up to three dragon cards from the display into your hand. Then you can play cards in front of you to gain rewards, which will earn you points. The magic book will tell you how many cards of a certain coloured dragon you can play in front of you and what the rewards will be if you are able to do so. But you can use dragon cards to change the pages of the magic book before you play your dragons in front of you. Taking dragon cards. On your turn, you can take one, two or three dragon cards, one at a time, from the display and add them to your hand. Whenever you take a card, you must replace it with a card from the corresponding page of the magic book. And there's no limit to the number of cards you can have in the hand. During this part of the turn, if you have any crystals, which you can get as part of certain rewards when you play dragon cards, you can return one to the supply and draw a fourth dragon card. But you can only use one crystal per turn, so the most you could draw is four cards in total. Changing the magic book. Before you play cards in front of you, you can change the magic book to suit the cards you have in hand. To do this, you may place one card from your hand face down onto the left or right of the magic book. And you can do this to place one card on both sides of the magic book if you wish to. And in this case, you would have placed two cards from your hand. To help with this ability, the dragon cards have a little icon showing you what's on their reverse. So that you can easily choose which card you want to place onto the magic book without having to look at the backs of the cards. 
For example, this red dragon shows that it has the number one on its back, and the reward is a piece of amulet and a crystal. On the other hand, this white dragon has an icon showing a green dragon, which means there's a green dragon page on the back of the card. This very clever mechanic allows you to manipulate the magic book to best suit the hand of cards you've been building up. For example, you may have a few green dragons that you want to play, but the magic book is asking for red dragons. By giving up your white dragon and flipping it over onto the magic book, you were changing it from red to green dragons, allowing you to play the number of indicated green dragons. By giving up another dragon, you could change the number required to be higher or lower, again to suit your hand and the number of dragons you have. Changing the number also changes the reward, so you may be after a specific reward and want to change the number to be that reward. Playing dragon cards. After taking dragon cards and manipulating the magic book, you may play dragon cards in front of you that exactly match what is shown on the pages of the magic book. So you must play the number and colour of dragons onto the table in front of you as a little stack. If on a future turn you play the same coloured dragons, you pop them on top of your matching coloured stack. However, if you play a different colour, you must place them to the left or right of your dragon stacks starting a new stack and this is where it gets interesting because there is one placement rule and that is no card can be placed on a stack between two other dragon colors so if you had a stack of red white and green dragons you can now no longer play any white dragons as they are between two dragons the red and green dragons so you have to think carefully when you place your third stack because you will no longer be able to play any dragons of what colour is in the middle. Receiving your reward. If you were able to play dragons on your turn that exactly match the magic book, you will collect the reward shown. You will always be able to take the lowest value amulet piece, with one exception. If it has a crown icon, you get to take the highest piece instead. Place the amulet piece face down in front of you. And if you get three pieces, they close the ring and you can pick a pearl to place face down inside it. The red pearls have an 8 to 9 value, so you want to be the first to get these. And the rest have values of 3 to 4. And every time an amulet is fully completed, make a note of the number of completed amulets in total by all players, as this could trigger the end of the game. As well as an amulet piece, you may get an additional item. A crystal, which you can use to draw up to four cards instead of three when drawing cards. A golden egg that is worth four points, but could be worth more at the end of the game. And finally, you could get a shadow dragon card that counts as a wild card, which you can add to coloured dragons to match their colour in order to reach the number required by the magic book. But you always have to have a coloured dragon for it to mimic. You can't play shadow dragons on their own. And there is one final reward, and this is something you get as soon as you have four coloured dragons in front of you. As soon as you have the four colours, you get to take the most valuable crest token, if available. Completing your turn. Once you have completed your turn, whether you play dragons or not, all players get to play dragon cards to match the magic book pages and claim rewards as normal. However, they cannot manipulate the magic book. They are stuck with what you chose or left. Players can only manipulate the magic book on their own player turn. The end of the game. The game ends after the player turn when a number of certain amulets have been completed, depending on the number of players. For example, in a two-player game, the game will end on the player turn when seven amulets in total have been completed. At the end of that turn, players reveal their rewards and add up all their points. At this point, the player with the most golden eggs will flip one from its four point side to its 16 point side. And if players are tied with the most golden eggs, they all get to flip one. And then the player with the most points wins. In the case of a tie, the player who played the most dragon cards wins. And if that is also tied, then they share the victory. Well, this really is a great little set collection game with plenty of twists that makes it interesting and compelling to play. Being able to use your dragons to change the spellbook is a brilliant idea that really elevates the game, giving you a lot of scope to play the cards that you've been building up. But all other players can also play their dragons at the end of your turn. So you may need to be careful about what pages of the book are left there for other players to use. 
this extra twist really does make you think and change what could have been a mundane set collection game into a great game where you really feel you have control when you play your turns. It's quick to play too, so with a 20 minute playtime, you are sure to want to set up another game to play again. It really is that good. This is a game that's going to be hitting our game table a lot in the coming weeks. We just can't get enough of these super cute dragons. Two fun with boxes thumbs up for dragon keepers. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Please do click the like button if you did. And also consider clicking the subscribe button. That would be awesome. And in the meantime, thanks for watching and please take care. Bye for now.